My Bose 321 uh, CD, DVD, uh, amplifier quit working. And what happened was the door for the CD player would not come open. Uh, so I watched a couple of YouTube videos, you know, like any good mechanic would do before you try to fix anything. And what I watched was two guys struggling with these things, the same problem. And they basically force these doors open. And when you force these doors open, what happens is on the DVD player tray, it breaks this ear off right here and on the other side. And while the door will still fit on with a little tab in the middle here, and the little clips on the bottom, it doesn't really hold it completely securely on there. It'll stay on and it'll come open and close, but it's really not assembled correctly when it's like that. And I hate breaking things. So I looked and searched away as much as I could to try to figure out how to do this without breaking that, that tab. And essentially, Bose has designed this thing so that if that door is closed, you, you basically cannot open it without breaking the tab. The way you begin, and if you look at the other videos, you'll see that you uh, pull these out and pull the top off and these tabs that are attached on these sides here, um, you know, come loose and you open up the top and then these, the, the front comes off. There's four little holes in the bottom here where you put a screwdriver and, and uh, unclip those clips and the top will slide off. But if this door is in here and closed, the only way to get that thing open is to basically break it off, to break off those tabs on the end. So this is another one that I bought for parts. And you can see that this is the front that fits in behind there on the DVD player itself, which is made by Toshiba. Now this unit was slightly different than the one that's in mine, even though they're both made, the units are both made by Toshiba for Bose. Um, they were a different model number, and so I had bought it for parts, but it really wasn't interchangeable because the parts were different. On the front of that, once you get the DVD player out, you can see that there's this tiny little hole here that you can put a pin through, and what that does is it releases the mechanism in there and allows the tray to move so that the door will open, and um, you can then manually pull the door open without breaking it any further. But what you can't do is get this cover off of that sliding tray without breaking the tabs on the tray. So to remedy that, when I put it back together, I drilled a little hole that's right here that aligns with this hole in the front of the tray right here. And you can stick like a coat hanger or whatever, or something a little smaller probably, um, through there that goes all the way through to the unit and releases the mechanism. Now on this one, the drive gear, little tiny eighth inch drive gear, had broken in half and wasn't turning, which is what runs the mechanism to pull, push the door out. On this one, that was different. That gear was fine, but there was an ear that is in the middle of the, the um, mechanism that holds the tray. It's just a little plastic tray that the, the uh, player tray fits into, and I'll show you that in a minute. That ear that lifts the, the, the tray out of the way, or uh, yeah, lifts the tray out of the way so that the door can eject, um, I'm sorry, it drops the tray out of the way, it wouldn't move because the ear was broken off. And so what I discovered was if you drill that hole in the front of this thing, and I'll show you exactly where what the measurements are for this hole, if you drill a hole there, it aligns with these four ears uh, and primarily this one that goes clean through to the hole in the front of the DVD player, which is lined up in here and lines up with this hole. Um, if you drill a hole through here on the front of this tray and it goes all the way through, then you can try to perhaps release the mechanism that way. So I'll give you the measurements on that in a minute when we when we get back to this. But Bose has really not supported this, and these trays are different. This is the tray out of this one, and it has the release mechanism to pull the tray the rest of the way out here, and it has completely different alignment with the uh, tracks and whatnot. And on the other one, the, the, the uh, release mechanism is in a different place, and so uh, there's a variety of different things that you can get with this. So this is the inside of the DVD CD player completely disassembled and you can see that I have basically taken 
you know, the entire, the entire unit apart with everything laid out here. And what I wanted to show you at this, in this segment is what actually broke on this one and what broke on the other one. So the, the unit that runs the CD, that turns the CD and reads the CD, you know, sits in here like this. And it sits on these little ears inside there, kind of like that. And it goes up and down. It, it's actually mounted in this little tray that fits in here that slides, that pivots up and down when you open and close the door. And this little tiny ear broke off, and that's the one that moves it in one direction, and these two move it in the other direction as it slides along this track here that opens and closes the door. You can see the, the track has these little guides on it. And so one guide moves it down, and these two guys move it up as this slides back and forth. And the pin that I talked about slides through this hole. This fits on the front, front ear like this. You put it through this hole that pushes this mechanism over that slides the tray over and will allow you to open the door. So that might work uh, if you have um, this tab broken off. On mine, this gear is what broke. And it was broken in half. And obviously it wouldn't turn, so I crazy glued it back together. And so far, you saw it opening earlier. Uh, it's working. I also added grease to everything in here just to make things work a little easier. Hopefully to keep the tabs from breaking off. And then I'll show you in the next segment here how this thing goes back together. Okay, so step number one in the reassembly process is to get this movable tray back in place and get it aligned with this mechanism that slides back and forth that moves the tray up and down with the CD uh, turntable and reader, which is, this is the reader right here that slides back and forth. Um, well, it does slide back and forth, but now it's not. Uh, anyway, we'll look at that in a second. Um, anyway, the get this thing in here and align properly, it, it fits on these two ears here and then gets secured with um, a couple of screws and to make sure that these two locking tabs don't um, back off. So once you get that in there, I believe it's these screws, these two little screws with these two little washers fit down in here and um, make this tab so that it is locked. But that's step number one. All right, now you can see the tray is in that holds the CD reader and um, motor, spinning motor. And you can see this little white gear down here is where you would put the pin through that would push this tray out of the way. And this gear moves back and forth on this series of gears that's turned by the actuator motor, which is right here on this little gear. The two other gears have fallen off, but I'll put them back on in a second. Anyway, so this is what moves back and forth and moves the tray up and down. And then we're going to mount <clears throat> the reader and, and spinner in there, and that'll move up and down uh, in a minute. Okay. This is with the gears put back in place, and you can see that it was held in with this one screw. But you have to take this big white gear off to get that thing to move freely and, and uh, repair it. So now you can see that the little actuator motor turns and when you the tray begins to slide, which is connected to this gear that, not tab rather, that slides along the track on the inside of this um, tray. And the tray, once it starts to move, pushes that gear in place uh, and they engage and then this pulls the tray up like that. So you can see it goes all the way over, releases and it's free spinning. The tray, when it moves, begins to push that over, engages the gear, and then pulls the thing up. And there's a sensor in here that, um, a sensing switch that shuts the motor off when it reaches the, the height that it's supposed to be at. So this is what it looks like with the 
tray mounted in there. It's this screw and washer and this screw and washer that fit over the rubber bushings there. And then on the other side, it's these smaller ones that fit over on this set of bushings. And this is the reader. It slides back and forth. As you can see now, the whole thing moves up and down when the motor actuates and that's what causes it to pull out of the way when it's ejecting and when it's running uh, it is in the up position and then the top goes on here that locks it in locks the CD in and we still have these ribbon connectors to put back on to the sliding reader tray and the uh, board that goes that computer board that goes back on the other side the ribbons just slide into the little fittings and So you'll see that when it's done here in a second Now that the unit is completely assembled the last thing to do is to put this tray in. this tray has a little clip here Where you can pull it out when you get it in when you get it out originally and that clip keeps it from going past the point where it's supposed to be when you go to put it in. At any rate, um, I think I just jammed it now while I was doing that. Um, at any rate, there's one important step here and that is that you have to pull this sliding track all the way over to start the process. Otherwise it'll pick the gear up too soon and it'll raise the drive motor up for the CD before this section of the tray clears. So you have to make sure that you have it aligned properly, have this in the right position, which is generally all the way over to what would be the left when you're looking at the front of it. And you get the tray started, and when you push the tray in, and now I'm having a problem doing it, I can't do it with one hand. Um, you see I've pulled it out all the way. Um, you got to have this tray over, I don't know if I can do it with one hand, right, like that, so that you can go through, and when it comes in, you'll see that at the end this begins to come up. It won't run all the way up because the motor's not running now. But if you don't do that, it'll come up ahead of time and you will not be able to get the tray in. And then one last thing I was going to say was on this cover plate that goes on the front of the CD, and then by the way, this this goes on top, which is a magnet um, that when that tray lifts up, this magnetic wheel locks the CD in so it turns in the proper position and that's the last piece to put on here aside from the cover the box that it's in and then on this I'm going to drill this hole out make it a little bit bigger so you can stick a coat hanger in there because that's just a little too small for a coat hanger and then we're going to put it back in our unit we've already tested it it works um, and it's working fine and that will be the end um, here are just for another recap the holes that line up with the cover plate and this is the one that's through that goes through to the release mechanism on the front of the unit which is right inside I'll show you here right inside that slot and that little button there by the way is just a actuator button to open and close the door without having to have the thing connected anyway um, that is where the, the hole lines up with to push that lever over to release the door from the outside. So good luck with yours. Have confidence you can do it. It's just one step at a time and be gentle because things break easily. All right, I just put the player in temporarily like this to see if it would work. And you plug in the ribbon band in the back and a four wire connector in the back and then just set it up there to see if everything would function properly and it does. But while I had it here, I wanted to show you how to take this faceplate off. There's these four clips on the bottom, as I said, and you go from the bottom of the uh, case, and you just push them up gently, and the bottom will slide off. To remove the ribbon band on this one, there's a little um, clip that you slide down. You just push down on the bottom, push down on the bottom part of it, and it opens up, and then the ribbon band slides out. You can see this thing is sort of hinged here and to put it in you slide it in and you just click it back in and that's pretty easy but what I really wanted to show you was the measurement on the um, cabinet here and of course I forgot my measuring tool someplace here it is um, so the measurement 
and let me get this where you can see it. The measurement on that hole, if you measure from the very edge of the front of the green plate, is exactly 65 millimeters. Okay, and I drilled an eighth inch hole and the center of the eighth inch hole down from the silver part and we'll measure here in the middle is two and a half millimeters from the silver part, the edge of the silver part down to the center of where that hole would be. So it's two and a half millimeters to the center of an eighth inch hole and it is 65 millimeters from the edge of the front of the green plate over to the center of where your hole would be.